On this installment of Let's Wine About It, we will be taking a look at our blueberry wine to see how it's doing. It's been about six weeks, so I'm very excited to see what it tastes like, what its alcohol content is, and what we need to do next. So stick around. First thing I'm going to do is open it and take a reading. We will find out from there what its alcohol content is at, what its sugar content is at, and then what we need to do next. Most likely it's going to be fully fermented out, really dry, so not sweet, and we're going to rack it into a new container to encourage clarification of the wine and bulk aging, which I'll explain. So step one, open up your container. Be careful at this stage, moving the fermenter and opening it and shaking it around because at the moment there's a lot of settled dead yeast and proteins and other things that would make the wine opaque, that would add a haze to it. They've settled out and this is actually remarkably clear. I'm able to shine a light through it and see through the other side. So I don't want to mix anything back into it that's already settled out. So be very careful. So about three weeks ago, I actually recorded a video because you'll remember this was contained in the two gallon fermented bucket. It's not in there anymore. I'm sure you noticed. What happened was I took a reading on it and it had only decreased by about 20 points in I think two weeks. So it occurred to me that I probably added a dead yeast to it. I used Fleischmann's bread yeast that my uncle had given me. And then he told me later he'd had it for seven years. By that point, yeasts are probably dead. So I probably added just a insufficient amount of yeast to it. So I actually re-inoculated it with a fresh batch of bread yeast that I bought, and then I siphoned it into this container to get it off the fruit. I really don't leave wine on fruit for more than two weeks, and that's probably good protocol. Wow, okay. You know, just goes to show no one's perfect, not even me. <laughs> it's sitting at 1.040 which is a lot of sugar. Now it has a brilliant clarity to it. It's clarified quite a bit, but that means it only dropped 30 points from three weeks ago when I inoculated it with new bread yeast. I may be coming to learn that bread yeast just isn't the yeast to use. I mean, most people in the winemaking community think that. And I was like, no, 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 I'm sure it's perfectly fine. Well, turns out there might be a reason to their hesitancy to use bread yeast. Wine yeasts have been produced in a laboratory and isolated for the purpose of making wine, bread yeast isn't. I mean, it's all Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the species of yeast, it's all the same, but they do do different things. So let's pour off a taste and see, see how it came out. It looks so pretty and it's very clear, which I'm content with. A lovely taste. It's a very delicate wine. But honestly, it's not thin. It's it's full bodied, it's rich, it's very tasty. So what are we gonna do? Because right now it's it's still too sweet. I would not serve this wine to others to and be proud of it. And that's always my benchmark for a success in fermentation is would I be proud to serve to someone else? No. So this is a stuck fermentation. And I'm going to re-inoculate it with a different strain of yeast that has a high al alcohol tolerance that is a wine yeast isolated for this purpose and is known for restarting stuck fermentations. Because that's what we have on our hands right now, is a fermentation that stopped well short of when it should have. So I'm going to get that yeast, I'm going to prepare everything I need, and I'm going to show that to you. The next thing I'm going to do is hydrate my yeast. I did this in one previous video for this exact same reason because I had a stuck fermentation. And I usually don't hydrate yeast because I've just found that you can have a fermentation succeed without doing it. But a lot of people maintain that you need to rehydrate yeast, which means it's pretty simple. You just add your yeast to a little bit of warm water before you put it into whatever the juice is that you're gonna ferment. But I'm gonna do it this time to just ensure the best chance of success. I'm using Premier Cuvier because it has a reputation for restarting stuck fermentations. So it can tolerate really high levels of alcohol and sugar. And so it's gonna give us the best shots, robust yeast that can probably ferment out the rest of the sugar that the bread yeast was not able to. You get a fourth a cup warm water, about 90 to 100 degrees, and you pour 
In this case, we're gonna do half a packet. I use the other half for the sweet cherry wine. I'm gonna use the half here for the blueberry. Give it a little swirl. And then put it off to the side. The directions say about 20 minutes, so that's, that's what I'm gonna do. The other thing I'm gonna be using is yeast energizer. There are two things that are often confused, yeast nutrient and yeast energizer. The key difference between the two is that while both supply nitrogen, which is crucial for cell, for yeast replication and building a healthy colony, yeast nutrient only uses one source of nitrogen. Yeast energizer uses multiple sources, among a few other things, a few other vitamins that are helpful for healthy yeast. And yeast energizer has a really good reputation as well for restarting stuff fermentation. Half a teaspoon per gallon of must, liquid, wine, whatever. So I revisited an old book that I had read on winemaking and read its section on why we should rehydrate yeast before just pitching them into the fermentation. And it was hilarious. And I'd like to read it to you, if you wouldn't mind. Question, why do I need to rehydrate dry yeast before using it? Answer, rehydrating yeast before pitching or adding it to juice or must is an important step in assuring a healthy fermentation. Adding dry yeast to a high sugar solution such as grape juice is like giving a presentation to your boss without preparing a good outline. You're just not ready. Dry yeast cells are dormant and must be awakened before they can be called on to perform their best for you. Rehydrating them is like lubing them, revving their cellular mechanisms, and giving the poor guys a chance to get their heads screwed on straight before they start chewing away at the sugar. What a colorful explanation of why we rehydrate yeast. So I probably will start doing that. Um, I, I figure it can't hurt. So, so why not take that step that has some reasonableness to it? But still, more, more research needed, we'll see. It has been about 20 minutes. And you'll notice uh, this is a good sign that it's all foamy and milky looking. It means the yeast are alive and doing something. So, move the lid. And we're gonna pour this in carefully because about seven months ago on one of my very first fermentations, when I added more yeast to it after it had been stuck, it exploded and got all over the counter and it was a big fat bummer. I don't wanna do that here. So we're gonna pour it in carefully, slowly, and gently. Careful, SpongeBob. Careful, SpongeBob. <laughs> okay. Man, that would be so disappointing if it just went just like that. That's how it would sound too. Mix it in there. Come on, man. Why are you being so stupid? Ugh. Okay. Now we do my absolute favorite thing and wait. I sanitized and got prepared to rack this into new containers, but you know what? The fermentation had other ideas, and that's okay. Every single home winemaker and every single commercial producer even makes mistakes, and you learn as you go, and that is totally okay. That's a good thing. That means this is real. This isn't staged, and I like that about this show. So what you should do if this happened to you, follow those steps that I did to restart the stuck fermentation, put it back in a cool, dark place. I'm going to put this back in my closet. We're going to come back to it in three weeks maybe i'm assuming that's how long it'll take to fully ferment but we'll however long it takes and then we'll come back take a look at it and go to the next steps if you like this video please like comment on it tell me what you liked about it what you didn't like even and how i can improve and subscribe so you get a little alert when i post a video thank you for watching have a fantastic day